Um, we have been talking for the last several weeks about the garment of salvation, garment of righteousness, and now we're going to talk about the garment of strength or victory, though we use those interchangeably. Uh, the garment of strength um, comes from the scripture that Isaiah 52, 1, Awake, awake, O Zion, clothe yourself with strength. <clears throat> Put on your garments of splendor. Strength, strength, as I live a mighty, mighty force. And so we, we wrap ourselves in strength. Now the idea that, uh, thank you, thank you, that I was trying to find a particular piece. I was trying to find <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to find a, a Foxy Brown type character, and I couldn't find one at the comic store, so I had to get a uh, a Wonder Woman. <laughs> and we all know Wonder Woman, so all of you, in the sense, are Wonder Women. <laughs> but that's the idea. When she has on her uniform. She transforms into a, uh, a character of strength. And so it wasn't the woman so much, it was the uniform. Amen. Yeah, and, and so when you're wrapped in the garment of strength, it has the idea of what you're wearing. What you're wearing. The idea comes from Moses, uh, from, from Moses in Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. Remember when Moses and the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt? They hadn't gotten to Mount Sinai yet. And they were coming out of Egypt on the way to Mount Sinai. And um, the, the Amalekites, the Amalekites were a group of people who were, in biblical terms, were a type of flesh. <clears throat> they were always attack the people at your weakest moments when uh, Moses was coming out and those who were behind, those who were sort of behind, dragging behind, Malachi's would attack them. They would just attack your weakest point. Or if you only had a few here, they would attack your weakest point. And God says, one day I'm going to utterly destroy the Malachites because they are, they are so uh, uh, violent and, and they, they only get you when you're down, so to speak. But anyway, when they were coming out of, Israel, out of Egypt, rather, the uh, Malachites attacked the Israelites. And Moses went up to the mountain, and he said to Aaron and Hur, hold up my arms. Uh, and as long as they held up Moses' arms, the Israelites uh, were victorious. But when Moses' arms became tired, uh, became tired first, and then, uh, but when they held it back up, they eventually won the battle. Yeah. And the Malachites were a formidable force, and they were had a, a flag that uh, sort of indicated that you know when you saw the Malachite flag, you knew you were in trouble. But Moses, uh, when they had won the battle, they had won the battle. Moses. Uh, took that at that place of victory and he named it Jehovah Nissi. Mercy. Mercy. Jehovah Nissi or Yahweh Nissi. And he said, Lord is our banner. Uh -huh. Mercy. In other words, we are wrapped in the flag of God. All right. yes, That's our garment. God's flag. They are wrapped in their flag and we are draped in our flag. Amen. And so then when we talk about uh, Wrapped in the garment of Christ, wrapped in the garment of victory, or wrapped in the garment of strength, we say salvation is sort of wrapped in the garment of God. Right. And uh, righteousness wrapped in the garment of Jesus. Well, uh, the garment of uh, strength or victory is wrapped in the garment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I want to use a character in the Old Testament to sort of, sort of uh, bring three points home to us today. If you're wrapped in the Holy Spirit, there are three things you can expect when you're wrapped in the Holy Spirit. But we do expect some things to happen. One of the things we expect to happen when you are wrapped in God's Spirit, when you're wrapped in the Holy Spirit, the first thing you expect to happen is that you can expect to be in a spiritual battle. You can expect to be in a spiritual battle. One thing that Satan does, when you put the Holy Spirit in a sense, when you're wrapped in God's Holy Spirit, what Satan puts on your back is a bullseye. Yes, come on, come on, come on. He wants to attack you. Yes. Now you are a real threat to him. Yes. Before you were a sort of threat, but now that you have decided for God I live 
them for God I'll die. I'm going to say, say, for God I'll try to kill you. <laughs> You're going to be in a real battle. Real battle. Now, now when you get saved and, 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 and sanctified and you know all that stuff. So Jehoshaphat, when he wrapped himself in God, look what happened. Then some came and reported Jehoshaphat saying, a multitude is coming against you. Woo. How's anyone ever feel like all the demons of hell have attacked you and your family? There are times, there are times when it feels like not only the pressure from without, the pressure from within, the moment I accepted Christ, the moment I decided this is it, God, I'm totally giving my life to you, it seems like all hell breaks in. There's a spiritual battle. But secondly, I like this one. You can expect the second thing. When you're wrapped in God's garment of strength, you can expect that God will fight his battle, not yours. And there's a difference. What which what 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 Joe calls the fact. And there should be Second Chronicles, thanks, Brother Stewart, not Second Corinthians chapter 20, verse 15. It should be Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. Second Chronicles. But watch what Jehoshaphat, he said, listen, when Jehoshaphat realized he had a problem, he got all the people together, and he said, we're going to fast, and we're going to pray, and we're going to ask God to intervene. He said, that battle is too big for me. A multitude, remember what we said back in uh, verse 2, a multitude was coming against him. And so he got all the people together, and he began to fast and pray, and the word of God came. And this is what God says. Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you when you're wrapped in his garment of strength. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, because the battle is not yours, yes. but the Lord. Amen. The battle is not yours. You can expect a spiritual battle, but you can give that battle to Christ. Yes. That's the point. You can expect God to fight his battle. Now, you got to change your mind. I'm in a spiritual battle, but it's not mine anymore. It's God's battle. So I don't have to fight. I can just, as Moses is going to say in a minute, I can just stand and watch. And lastly, you can expect not only to expect a what, number one, and you can expect that God will and then you can expect to be victorious Amen. in battle. Amen. Now, God's going to fight, and I'm going to tell you, God's going to always win. Amen. Listen to what happened as Jehoshaphat uh, <laughs> realized that God was going to fight the battle. Listen to what he did. Now, remember, there's a multitude of, of people, an army coming against his people. And he goes to God, and God says, don't worry, we're going to fight your battle. You just present yourself. So what Jehoshaphat does, he's going to the battlefield. Look how he goes to the battlefield, verse uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 21 and 22. He says, and they arose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness for the battle. Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord your God. And you will be established. Just realize it's God's battle now. He said, put your trust in the prophets and succeed. Just take God at his word. That is his battle. Then Jehoshaphat appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy time. This is amazing. And they went before the army. What he did, in a sense, he took his praise singers and his praise dancers and those who were dressed in their holy garments and he put them in front. Come on. Yes, sir. Then he took his warriors yes. and the army and he put them in back. Come on. Come on. He said, we are going to fight the battle and we are going to win, so let's start celebrating. Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. He was celebrating before he even fought. Now, can you imagine that? So, if God is fighting your battle and you're going through something, start celebrating. You know, 